Hey everybody, it is December 19th, 2017, as I make this video, and today we're going to have a little fun with uh, plate tectonics and, and conjecture in the deep past. I'm not talking about back to Pangaea. I'm not even talking about back to Rodinia. I'm talking a lot further than that, to uh, the core of Laurentia, when the... Uh, how North America began to grow, and I'm going to deal with one problem in particular. I'm going to deal with um, what we call the Huronian Supergroup and the Snowy Pass um, Group in Wyoming, because these uh, meta sediments have very similar uh, geologic uh, stratigraphies, but they're separated by something, and it's kind of an enigma as to what exactly happened. But basically, this first slide here, all of that I'm showing you is, and all my references will be at the end, uh, what I'm showing you here is basically how the continent built up. This is just a map showing a certain clip in time, what deposits, when what was deposited when. That's basically the point of that slide. And these two red circles are the areas we are going to be dealing with. Mainly. There's some other ones, but that's it in a nutshell. So this is actually taken from a paper. It, it will be cited at the end. Um, what I have done here is uh, actually in the paper, these are all gray. I have made them, well, except for the yellow part, that wasn't uh, gray, but... Um, what I did, the parts we're going to talk about of how Laurentia broke up and reassembled, that, that's the uh, light brown colors here. The yellow colors are the meta sediments. And this is their relative shape on the continent as of today. The uh, Ray province and Slave province that you see up there, and there's ones in the lower uh, left hand corner, they're not going to be talked about. Because I'm going to take you from 2.5 billion years ago to 1.8 billion years ago. And although Luray, the Luray province and Slave province were connected and separated from North America, I, I'm going to focus on, here you see the Snowy Pass supergroup and Hordean supergroup. We also have the, the Lower Wollaston group, and I can never pronounce that group, <laughs> uh, up there in uh, the middle of Ontario, beginning with an O. I believe it's Opswagen group. Those are also meta sediments, and they're key to putting the continent back together to where it was two and a half billion years ago. All right, so what what you see here is I'm resetting everything. I'm moving everything, and my base for all this is going to be the modern Lake Superior region. So you're going to see these continents reassemble and drift apart and reassemble based off of that and Lake Superior is situated on the Superior Craytown, which is the biggest landmass you see here. And I'm just going to keep that at where it is, and everything's going to move relative to that. And I'll get into later why I'm doing that because actually, I'll just say it now as we go back further in the past, we don't really know exactly where the continent was located. We have a general idea, but we don't know for sure. And since I need to establish a base, I'm just going to work off the Superior Province as my base here. Now, how does this reassemble? Does this reassemble at all? Uh, well, it, it does. As you move, you can see the continents will kind of come together. And they fit actually pretty well, these, these continental fragments, into and against the superior continent. So they're a pretty good fit. Now, there's another place. There's a cup of all. Uh, Craton in South Africa that's significant when talking about this and this is where I pulled that province from here and this is a similar this is just me taking it and making it brown and yellow to fit everything here and it's going to be talked about here in a minute um, and that's the cup of all now that presently is in South Africa as you saw but it wasn't always that way now if you take the cup of all and you put it against the superior province and match up the uh, meta sediments they line up pretty good all right and if you do this with the wyoming province and this is one of the things um people have suggested that the wyoming province might have been rifted from the superior and swung 180 degrees but as you can see, it, that's kind of hard to do, especially since we don't know the arrangement of the other continents for sure. So there could have been something in the way until we can get a 2.5 billion year old better 
uh, grasp of the continental arrangements, this is kind of a stretch because what you have here, the TH, that's a trans-Hudson orogeny. And the fact that that's there and is reworked um, uh, Archean uh, rocks that have been turned into mountain ranges really make this difficult to do. I personally don't think that's a viable model. Well, what if we use the Kopval instead? Well, the Kopval could just have slowly rifted away, and we really don't have a problem. Well, is there other indirect or semi-direct evidence that the Kopval was attached to uh, the Huronian supergroup and not the Snowy Pass of Wyoming? Yes, there is. Here's the Huronian and local equivalents, all right? Here's the Wyoming craton. These two are very similar in lithologies, all right? There, there are later sediments of the Snowy Pass that we don't have with the Huronian and its equivalents in Ontario and the Upper Peninsula, but they're very similar, and that's a key indicator that they formed along the same continental margin. As you can see here, the, the two in the middle, those are from South Africa on the Cap Vault. And they are not very similar. You have a different assemblage of sedimentary units. The reds here are banded iron formation. The greens are glacial deposits. And the yellows are sediments. Um, the uh, purplish, light purplish blue are igneous intrusions. So you don't... They're not very similar. Not as similar as the Huronian in the Snowy Pass. So that is what you would expect if a continent rifted apart and... One part was in, on one part of the planet experiencing some sort of uh, uh, one type of environment, while the other one moved away and the sediments were derived in a different type of sedimentary environment. So that, the, using the cop vol makes more sense. So what likely happened? Well, here I'm going to take you through some slides. In the lower left will be how long ago that was. Remember the 2.50 GA, GAs, billions of years. I left the cop vol off because I already showed you basically what happened, but it would have been situated in, like it was in the previous slide before I showed it rifting off. So we have this superior... We have Proto Laurentia, and I've labeled the Superior and Wyoming uh, provinces since those are the ones I'm going to be mostly talking about here. And we started getting rifting in two places. All right, the blue arrows indicate transform movement uh, as opposed to subduction or rifting. And as we go along here, um, you're going to see that. These purple dotted ones in the middle, those are those are what will later become the Treads, Hudson, Orogeny, and those reworked Archean sediments. What these probably are is probably like you have in the Indian Ocean today. These are microcontinents, continental fragments that separated, and I've talked about this in another video, during rifting. And they're dashed here because they would have been below sea level at this point, but they are actually continental fragments, not ocean crust fragments. So, and the uh, green arrows uh, show you the relative movement of the other provinces. Now here we are at 2.4 billion. And as you can see, we have more microcontinents forming, a couple more transform but but we're still rifting. Everything's still moving away. All right. And we're getting these passive margin, these yellow sediments. All right. Now, about 2.35 billion years ago, the rifting on the southern part, or what is now the southern part of the Superior Craton, is still happening, but the other rift, rifting has stopped. And we're starting to get a closing of the ocean basin. This is the middle point of a Wilson cycle. Wilson cycle is from the rifting and opening of an ocean basin to its closing. All right, And we still have our microcontinents here submerged below sea level. Now as subduction happens and then begins to happen elsewhere as these continents, as these continental fragments re-merge, uh, the the light purple has become dark purple and solid with a solid line around it as it has risen above sea level to reattach to these other cratons. So here we are at 2.25 billion years ago, and you can see that we're starting to get re or reassemblage. And as continental fragments reassemble in a subduction zone, it tends to shut off the subduction. So as you'll see here at 2.0, uh, where the La Rouge arc is here, you can see that subduction has stopped and moved, but we're still subducting towards the superior craton. And now we have subduction along the southern margin 
of the superior craton. And this is probably recorded in the Nipsing intrusions where we have these volcanics throughout the Huronian supergroup, but we don't have like an island arc merging with the continent. So we likely had subduction there at this time. So now we're moving back together, and I just highlighted the Larange arc um, just to show you where it is. That's an island arc, but it's not worth separating out as a different color so i just did that and it, it stays there as it is now part of that continental fragment and they continue to move back together and you can see now how all those microcontinents are above sea level and have merged so we kind of have two continents here we have superior and the one wyoming is attached to but if you look in the south here we start to see subduction happening elsewhere as well as these two green uh uh, new continental fragments move towards the superior craton. Now here we are at 1.9 billion years ago. Subduction has stopped everywhere. Now, now rifting is still happening elsewhere on the planet. It's just for this particular demonstration I've left it out because we don't really know where it is until we can do an accurate reconstruction. But we have a good enough understanding of this. And as you can see the greens have now merged and subduction is pushing them against the superior craton. And that is what happened at 1.80 billion years ago with the Pinocchian orogeny. And we have these two terrains, the green terrains, that have merged with the superior continent, and that has moved subduction further south even more. And eventually more continental fragments will merge with North America around 1.6 to 1.2 billion years ago, leading up to the eventual assembly of Rodinia. And as you can see here, I put the Sudbury impact site uh, here at 1.85 billion years ago. That was a major impact during the Precambrian. So here's just an outline of where the uh, provinces I left out. And I remember in the beginning where I showed you those gray uh, continents, I said we we're part of Laurentia but not significant for the model this is about where their uh, outline would be and you can see the TH which would be the trans Hudson orogeny and that's why we see these mountain these highly deformed mountainous um, uh, rocks in the Archean is because if they were separated during rifting and just continental fragments and then reaccreted that's exactly what you would expect to see on a from uh, as a microcontinent was re-merged to the uh, craton. Because there's no island arcs in that either, other than the one I showed you earlier. So we probably had those microcontinents, which we have examples of today. Like I said, they're in the Indian Ocean, uh, most of them, bet uh, between Madagascar and India, and also between Western Australia and India. So where, were, where was Laurentia? Uh, two and a half billion and 1.8 billion years ago. The short answer is we really don't know. Um, the paleomagnetism data is uh, a lot better for 1.8 billion years ago than it is for two and a half. The further back you go, the more, hi more highly metamorphosed the rocks are, it gets harder to uh, get reliable paleomag data. And if memory serves me correctly, we only have direct evidence of Earth having a dipole magnetic field uh, about three and a half billion years ago. Fortunately, we're working two and a half and 1.8, so after that. We can, but we can still get a general idea. I put the equator here on lines of longitude and latitude. Now, what we can reconstruct from paleomagnetic uh, data is we can get the latitude of where a continent is and the relative longitude not the exact longitude there's no way to determine that so we so that's why there's no lines of longitude on here i believe these uh latitude lines are in 15 degrees see 15 45 6 uh 45 60 uh yeah i, th I believe they're in 15 degree in intervals all right so now two and a half billion years ago we had the supercontinent of Kennerland. I have only included Laurentia and Kopval here. There would have been other continental fragments attached or very close by, but that wasn't the focus of what I was doing. 
this reconstruction is probably a lot better than trying to reconstruct all of Kennerland. Uh, the blue is just where modern Lake Superior sits in its shape so you can get a relative scale. And as you can see, it's about up there about 20, 30 degrees latitude one and a half billion year, or two and a half billion years ago. Um, but what about 1.8 billion years ago? Well, we had a supercontinent then, Nuna and Columbia. But it's, I don't know why there's two names for it, but it basically is, was North America with maybe a couple other continental fragments on it. It wasn't, it was going slowly towards Rodinia, but was not at the time. And this is likely its orientation and location on the globe um, to the best of our understanding as of today. So I hope you got a little, I wanted to do something a little fun for once instead of just boring lectures to show you how to reconstruct continents and how we really don't know the further you go back in time and how we need better data in order to figure this stuff out but anyway these are my references here and this is all of them that's all the ones I use but anyway that is um, basically it if you have any questions or comments please leave them below I will answer any questions and I hope you learn something